Smitty first and foremost um, for kind of inspiring this video uh, as well as Apex Sin Football Critic Versus um, this video is basically about um, where we need to go um, as far as the basketball games go um, from here seeing as NBA Elite has been moved to Tiburon Studios which is probably bad news because that's the same studio that produces Madden and we all know what kind of trash comes out of that studio now, ever since uh, Tiburon has taken over Madden, I wouldn't necessarily, you know, call it a bad production, but the, the direction that's gone in for next gen has not been a good one. So on your screen right now, you're seeing some old school basketball, man. If you had an NES, you know that game was double dribble. One of the um, first basketball games that I ever played. Um, and, and you... For the young people out there, or the younger people, that's what kind of basketball we were in for uh, when we turned on our consoles back when we was, you know, young, whatever. On your screen right now is Live 95, and just this video is basically for us to keep it in um, perspective of the improvements that have been made, you know, year over year, just about, you know, games in general, but more importantly for the basketball game and the basketball series on where it can go. Now, I won't say that I don't want to see a title from NBA, I mean from EA Sports, because uh, I've always said the competition makes for a better product, and that still holds true to this day. I mean, if you ask me, uh, or anybody out there who has a, uh, a strong opinion about how these games need to, the direction these games need to be going and need to have competition in the market. As you can see with the football and Madden, when you don't have competition, you can just basically monopolize your your audience and feed them whatever you know trash you want to. So on the screen right now, for those of you who don't know, this is Arch Rivals, a game. This is NBA Jam before NBA Jam. You know, you could go down court and push, punch up um, somebody. Boom! Right there. <laughs> Punch him right in the face, steal the ball. And, you know, basically, you know, that was this was the kind of fun that we was having back in the day with basketball games. You know, we always thought about those days and when uh, it would become more complicated. Now, right here, as you can see, the arcade version of NBA Jam. Now, as far as where we need to go, man, um, basically, the difficulty setting because Hall of Fame we all know that the highest level of difficulty seems to cheat you and that's not only in EA Sports games but 2K Sports too and it needs to be reflected in um, strategy over manipulation so what do you mean by that like the higher the difficulty it needs to be like chess master so like if you ever played chess or um, the video um, version of chess it's on xbox live marketplace for all those people who might play chess out there when you put it on chess master you're getting the most strategic game out of anybody that's listed on that list and basically that's how games need to be you know it doesn't need to be manipulation but more so strategy and testing your strategic knowledge of the game you don't want to take 10 steps back just to go one step forward you know we do have new consoles coming out probably what in the next two years or so so are we gonna have to start all the way over at square one now right here what you see on your screen for those um, who remember this is Lakers vs Celtics a classic video game made by EA Sports look <laughs> uh, doing the double clutch uh, dunk right there you know, cheesing like Carlos Boozer but anyway, this is just a video, man, so we basically can reflect on where we've come from and where we are now, you know. And it's real important, uh, it was important to me to show uh, some of the younger people out here, you know, where it's come from. Because to some people, you know, probably Live 99, Live 2000 is probably the start, you know, of their basketball gaming career. And where it's actually been, you know, way before that. Now, as you can see, look at the 
improvements that have been made. Now on your screen is 2K, uh, NBA 2K8. And, you know, I did skip a, a whole bunch of basketball games, but I didn't want to take up too much of your time. But I did want to show some, you know, where we've gone, where we've come from, and where we can go in the future. Um, and just the improvements that have been made, you know, not the same different shot selections, signature styles, um, playbooks, um, just a whole lot of different, you know, venues that this thing is basically veered off into uh, that we can, you know, basically appreciate. Now, do, am I saying that we should give excuses to these developers? No, uh, I'm not saying that at all. Like. Like I said, you need to be held accountable if you put out a game and you're charging people $65 for it, then it needs to be worth that weight. You know, back in the day, uh, a game called 2K5 was $19.99, and that game uh, was a classic. So, it can be done. And not only can it be done, but it can be done well. You know, just think about that. Think about all that value we got for $19.99 uh, for a game that is no longer in production. And at the time, it was still a deal. You know, at the time, I had both Madden and um, ESPN NFL 2K5, you know, because it was only $20. But uh, back to basketball, man. 2K11 is a great game, and they address some of the issues um, from 2K10. And you can tell it's a better game. A year, The year-over-year -year improvement is tremendous. But at the same time, some of the issues that were in 2K10 still plague 2K11, you know. They, hopefully the patch will address most of the issues, but, you know, why does it take a patch? Uh, you know, why can't you have some of your true gamers test it out? Like, why does this stuff get through quality assurance? Why does my player have to be figured out, you know, that my player mode freezes when somebody has gone and played, you know, half of a season, then all of a sudden they get a black screen and can no longer um, play their game? You know, stuff like that is unacceptable if, you know, we're going out here and we're paying $65 a pop to uh, support your company and support your game. Uh, no way in shape or form am I giving developers a pass. I mean, they need to be held accountable. And for the most part, I think the gaming community does a good job at that. But, it's, you know, I'm going to sign off and hopefully uh, you got a little history lesson as well with the old games included in this video. Peace.